In this last video, we are just going to discuss the runtime of the algorithm for Dijkstra's shortest path. I previously mentioned that this code looked very similar to the minimum spanning tree code that we looked at. It is in fact identical to that code. This first implementation is exactly the same as our minimum spanning tree implementation. It, all that has changed, the thing that we are minimizing is not just the weight, but vi.distance plus the weight. And there's one additional line of code, this line of code here, and this thing here, and the fact that we technically said shortest path parent and shortest path parent. Those are the only differences between this. Therefore, this code will have identical runtime to the prims algorithm. I'll just write that, identical to prims. I will let you guys go through that. It is worth trying to do it again. Try and remember what was the runtime for this first implementation of the algorithm that we did. But this will be identical in all of our reasoning and the runtime for the algorithm that we talked about with prims. So try and remember how we discussed that algorithm and perform the analysis here yourself. And then, just like we do with the prims, we're going to modify the algorithm to make it more intelligent. So let's modify it by storing additional information at the nodes and therefore minimizing the runtime in a more reasonable way. So our next thing we're going to do is we're going to, instead of just recomputing the distance to every node, we are going to store the distance at each node. Rather than storing the distance only once we add it to the set g dot v minus u, what we're going to do is store the distance the whole time. And this code, again, is effectively identical to the code we did for the prims minimum spanning tree algorithm. The only difference here being that we are finding the node with minimum distance instead of minimum weight, or minimum cost is what we called it in uh, prims minimum spanning tree. We've changed it from minimum spanning tree to, sp to shortest path. We technically are defining a quantity here just because it's more convenient than writing it inside of the if statement. So we have a new, for each edge, we find the new distance to the node, ex exactly like what I was doing when I was going through this myself. We're going to find the new distance to every single node incident on the vertex we just added to our shortest path tree and update the distances if we find a better path. So the only differences here are we use distance here, we use new distance there, and we made this if statement a little different. Otherwise, it is identical to the code that we looked at for the minimum spanning tree. And again, it will have identical runtime because the only thing we're changing is rather than looking at weight, we're looking at distance plus weight. And accessing that field inside of the node and then adding the weight to it is a constant time operation. Therefore, it will not affect the runtime. So again, just like the previous implementation, I encourage you strongly to go through and try and replicate the analysis that I did for this problem on your own to verify that you can perform that sort of analysis on these types of algorithms. But the code, again, is identical to the Perms Minimum Spanning Tree algorithm. Now, I can guarantee lots of you know exactly where we're going. Oh man, we implemented it this way. Can we do it any better with a data structure? Blah, 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 Nick never shuts up about talking. And then he goes on and goes, oh yeah, we can do it better with a data structure. And he copy pasted an entire table blatantly from his minimum spanning tree stuff. And then, oh look, he copy pasted his code and made very minor modifications from his minimum spanning tree lectures. So we do the exact same thing we did for the minimum spanning tree. We store the distance to each node in a minimum priority queue. We then will update those distances in the while loop if we find a new better path. Rather than storing the things just at each vertex, we store those costs in a minimum priority queue and therefore can hopefully take advantage of the fact that we can look things up in log of s time and that will hopefully improve our runtime. Again, the only difference here is we now have the minimum distance, shortest path, we're setting the distance instead of the cost. We're finding the distance. We're comparing it to the value we found so far. Then we're going to decrease it. It is identical. The only difference is we're changing cost to distance. That is the difference between the shortest path tree and the minimum spanning tree. Therefore, the runtime should be, again, identical to the running time that we had in the shortest path tree algorithms.
I will, in the completed version of these notes, include the runtimes for these code segments, but just so you guys are encouraged to do it on your own, try and repeat the analysis that I did for these algorithms. They are identical, but doing it again on your own is a good way to study and make sure you understand what was done. So again, it is identical to Prim's minimum spanning tree, the shortest path tree. The difference being that we needed to prove that this greedy algorithm worked before we could guarantee that this code could work out correctly. And it was not obvious before we analyzed our theorems and developed our theorems that this code was in fact going to work. It was much less obvious than in the minimum spanning tree, most likely. Maybe for you it was somehow obvious, but for me, it was not so obvious. So for Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm, the code is implemented identically to the code we did for Prim's minimum spanning tree. And I encourage you, again, to go through and try and analyze it on your own so that you can understand how you analyze this sort of algorithm.